Scratch has been hiding nine secret scratch blocks from us this entire time. Some of these scratch blocks are really cool and some of them are kind of weird. But I'm going to show you guys how you can pull them into your scratch project and you guys can use them in future projects and allow you to do tons of stuff and some super cool stuff really fast. Anyways, let's jump straight into this. First things first, pull up your browser and search Turbo Warp. Then go to TurboWarp.org and click it. Then click the See Inside button once you get to the home page. And then come down to this Add Extension button and scroll down until you find the Hidden Block Collection extension. And then add it to your project. And once you add this extension to your project in Turbo Warp, you'll see nine blocks pop up. Now before you guys leave, thinking I'm just showing you another Turbo Warp extension, and that you can't actually use these inside of your Scratch projects, well you actually can use this extension inside of Scratch. But we just have to use a method of going through Turbo Warp first. Which I will show you guys in a second, but first let's actually look at what these blocks do. First this is an event block, which basically is just triggered whenever you touch something. So if I create another sprite here, this event gets triggered whenever we're touching Bob. So I can change it from mouse pointer to be touching Bob. I can also say mouse pointer, and every time we touch the mouse pointer, let's say hello for one frame, I guess. So we'll only say it. So if I hit run it, I touch the mouse pointer. So you can see it tells it says hello. But obviously it's only triggered once. It's only triggers once we touch it. But still, this is super handy. Next, there's the for each block. And this one's absolutely crazy. This one allows you to index a certain time through using a variable. Or basically it's a for loop if you've ever used real programming language. I'll show example. As it says for each i, I can change this to another variable, but it should create one. But if it doesn't for you, just create a new variable called i. As you say, it also exists. So I, there's still some bugs with this one, but it should work when you transfer over to Scratch. But I'll just change over my variable for this example. If I show this variable here, as you can see, it has this number here. We're going to loop 10 times and set my variable equal to the current loop we're at. Let me show an example. I'm going to go wait one second inside of this. And I'll actually set this to 2. And if I run this, you'll see my variable slowly increase every few frames which allows us to actually loop through lists. Example being, if I create a list called names, add thing onto it a million times, instead of looping 10, I'll loop through the length of our names list, and then I'll grab the item, my variable. So instead I'll say, hey, but I'll say the item, my variable, and then we'll wait a couple of seconds that a delay. And if I run this block, you see we'll say thing and it increases. But obviously it's just gonna say thing forever because we have a million things. And it allows you to loop through lists. This one's personally my favorite. Um, so yeah. Next there's the while block. This block is pretty self-explanatory. It just loops while you give it the condition. So while the condition, all you need to do is drag your condition in like so. I can go y50 is equal to 50 or greater than 50. It'll do whatever. Next there's the counter blocks. These ones are a bit interesting and uh, I'm guessing you can just use the counter and just increment the counter and then look at what the counter is and then clear it. Um, so yeah, you can use it for all kinds of stuff, I guess, but yeah, I don't know. No, it's not as crazy. Though. The last three ones are very interesting. First, you have this weird one, which will round to a piano. This one's very interesting and yeah, I really don't know what that's for. This one actually allows us to join colors together or join it colors with a number i guess which is interesting and then this last one's pretty weird but i thinking it's for a microcontroller screen but it allows you to join numbers if you draw a screen on here it'll actually return what that is in binary but these main first blocks are absolutely insane and this for each one would help in so many scenarios in your scratch games now i know what you're saying how do i actually get these inside of my scratch project well it's actually quite simple First things first, all you need to do is drag all the blocks you want inside of your scratch project or a sprite. I'm personally going to drag these into my backgrounds because um, this is just a safer method of storing them. Then you'll never delete these. Once they're stored in my background, all I need to do is come up here and go file, save as. Then I'm going to save it as crazy scratch blocks. And as you see, it's a .sp3 file. And if you ever saved a scratch project, you'll realize this is also a scratch project. So if I save it, I'll not have it installed on my computer. Now go to scratch and hit create project. And then go to file and load the project you just had from your computer. So I'm going to come here, load from computer, downloads crazy scratch blocks. And if I open this file or program, if I go to my backdrops, you'll see here's all the blocks I brought from the project. 
and they still work. So I can set this to be for each or for my variable. You'll see that my variable will actually increment. So all these blocks still work within Scratch, but now you can use them. So all you need to do is when you need one of them, just drag it into that sprite. And if you go to the sprite, you now have the block right here. This is super crazy. I don't know why Scratch just hasn't added this stuff normally. That for each block would save tons of times with using less. And it would allow tons of stuff. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Apologies for the delay in posting. Um, to be honest, I've been trying to come up with videos, and I've also been trying to figure out how to do the multiplayer part 2 one, because I'm working on bullets and trying to figure out a good method of doing that. It's kind of annoying. So hopefully that'll come out soon, um, but it might be quite a while for that one. If you guys want to see more cool videos like this, please consider subscribing. Or if you at least like this video, it'll help me. And I'll also put this out, video out to other people so more people can find out about these secret scratch blocks. Anyway guys, that's all for me, and I'll see you guys in the next one.